Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Robert Stickle. I'm also joined by my colleague, Jose Levy. Jose will be today's presenter and will discuss the topic of Tales from Implementation, OnePlan, Microsoft PPM, and the Effective PMO. This webinar is a new addition to our series of adaptive webinars, so if you enjoy this video, feel free to watch the others we have available on our channel and look towards the next installment, which we'll be releasing soon. And as always, I hope that today's presentation grants you some insight into the world of project and portfolio management and gets you excited for the new developments happening within the industry and here at OnePlan. Thank you again. I'll now turn the presentation over to Jose. Thank you, Robert, and thanks everyone for joining. Uh, we're going to be giving you an update um, on our implementation stories of one plan within the Microsoft um, ecosystem, Microsoft Project Portfolio Management, for uh, an effective uh, PMO. So before I start, I just want to highlight that um, you know one plan has been partner of the year in um, for Microsoft and project portfolio management. You know, a winner finalist for the last five years. And you know what that means is that um, we have focused a lot on on the on the Microsoft ecosystem, and we are an important, uh, if not the most important, partner in driving um, project portfolio manager management within uh, the Microsoft Enterprise accounts. Uh, you, you see here also that that uh, we list um, Gartner, Infotech, um, and some of the other. Um, research analysts, and I think that's also important to highlight because part of our story is that we are project portfolio management experts, and we build our solution, um, you know, based on best practices, based on what our customers are telling us, based on um, what um, it, the the capabilities and the features that are required in uh, the solution in order to allow an organization to improve project portfolio management. And I'll be saying a lot strategic portfolio management because as the highest, I guess, aspirational uh, use case that um, that you can have for a project portfolio management in which you're really integrating um, both strategy and uh, IT investments. So it, it's, it's a true differentiator um, as a um, SPM, uh, solution SaaS solution vendor that that needs to be recognized, uh, and as a result, I know this, this is a busy slide, but um, I want to highlight that, and we've done this in in, in prior uh, webinars. When it comes to the SPM landscape and all the different scenarios that are available, our capabilities again because we are an SPM pure play, we're not just um, you know an add-on to Power Apps or or um, an application that somebody built on Power Apps. We are a, a SaaS uh, SPM vendor that gives you the flexibility to address multiple scenarios within your organization. So um, our tool is built that way. And um, whether you know you're focusing on demand management or focusing on strategy, or you can see in the top the the focus areas and the personas underneath. Uh, we're we're building our solution to make sure that um, you know all those different uh, user stories are addressed. Uh, if you look at um, the the hype cycle and all of the different areas of uh, strategic portfolio management that you could be addressing within your organization, again we are building our solution templates to address them, whether it's um, per um, a strategy realization office. The strategic portfolio management uh, template, or an EPMO, or whether you're doing agile, our agile enablement uh, for organizations is very high, specifically for Azure DevOps um, within the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, if you're doing something for a business unit, uh, you know our portfolio planning template is is very good. We've um, uh, entered the product portfolio management, and then finally. Um, our Sophia GPT is within all of our uh, templates, but you know AI-enabled PPM and RPA-enabled PPM are um, strategic portfolio management scenarios that are going to grow, and we address that. So again, um, we give you the the most flexibility to address um, all of these scenarios, and we do it, you know, also through our integrations. So I'll I I want to mention that because even though uh, we are purpose built for the uh, Microsoft 365 platform. Uh, we can 
um, also live within other ecosystems if you want to have your solution um, be you know within Smartsheet or your solution uh, be within uh, Salesforce uh, or ServiceNow. Uh, our integration platform allows that. Whether you're talking about you know um, bringing data in or taking data to those line of business systems. So in the end, what we want to position is you know your your organization has has an IT application landscape. So there's applications for uh, uh, capabilities that support capabilities and uh, processes and business units. You know, one plan is that cornerstone uh, application is specifically if you're within the Microsoft ecosystem that can actually, um, you know, address uh, those multiple scenarios. So you're not going to go wrong by uh, selecting one plan for strategic portfolio management. And at, go, coming back to the uh, Microsoft and Microsoft PPM, what Microsoft is doing is is uh, basically focusing on providing tooling for collaborative uh, work and project management. So you have Planner, you have Project for the web, you still have Project Desktop, um, you have to do, and you have all the other tools that right now most of the organizations are accessing through Teams, um, which include you know the full suite of of, of M365, and I include in that outer loop uh, Dynamics. Dynamics 365, Azure, um, you know, the Power Platform, because uh, those are important components. In fact, that's where Microsoft um, is making its investments for Project for the Web. Now, I highlight the Project Desktop Client because um, it's something that um, that we support, um, and uh, as part of uh, you know creation of um, a um, strategic portfolio management solution, and in the future, unfortunately, that will not be part of uh, Microsoft's vision for um, Project for the Web and the Power Platform, and, and OnePlan actually does address it. So I think it's important because there are still a lot of um, Project Desktop Client users uh, out there. So as you can see, what OnePlan does is we are that you know all-encompassing solution that converts um, what you have, your investment in M365, into a strategic portfolio management solution. Now on the outer edge, I place all the other external systems that we need to uh, integrate, and it just really depends on you know what makes most sense from a uh, investment standpoint and data requirement standpoint. But by this point, our One Connect platform, as I said before, can bring in data from you know any of those external line of business systems, whether it's um, agile planning, um, uh, ITSM, uh, financials, your, your you know your, your financial project financials. HR systems, strategy systems, or your sales, um, your sales uh, tracking systems. Uh, so all those can actually be uh, brought into. All that data can be connected to one plan, and as a result, be part of you know the entire data set that you're managing within M365. So uh, you know what what um, the, the one of the big takeaways is that you know what we what we've done over the last several years is. We've taken what Microsoft has provided in terms of Microsoft Project and Power Apps, which is really Project for the Web and the Project Accelerator, which one plan provided to Microsoft, and add the capabilities in order to make that solution a complete strategic portfolio management solution. And there's different ways of actually addressing that. Um, so uh, I, it, I, I just want to, you know, highlight that um, you know we complete the picture. Uh, in SPM uh, from Microsoft in uh, Project for the Web and and the Accelerator, and you know highlight here the 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 strongest areas you know time management in terms of whether it's a uh, task or timesheets, uh, financial management um, with our one plan financials, our one plan resource um, planner, and then our uh, one plan portfolio and modeler. Um, if we move then to, um, you know, why are um, why are customers selecting that are an M365 selecting one plan as a choice for project portfolio management? Well, first of all, we're, we're purpose built for portfolio management, and we're a SaaS solution hosted in Azure. So, um, as I said before, we're really focused on honing in on what's going to uh, make uh, you improve uh, portfolio management in the organization. We are we are not a power app uh, component framework uh, app 
that has you know code that um, you know might have risk in terms of updates and um, you know stability. So um, we are full solution um, in the Azure cloud. Um, we have the second point is I, I think the strongest. We give you the the most flexible uh, deployment options for the Microsoft. Uh, clouds. You, you can you can choose to use one plan um, on its own. You can choose to have it within Teams. Um, you can choose to have it within um, a the Project Power App. Um, you can choose to have it within Project Operations. So it just depends on the scenario and what what makes most sense. You're not forced uh, into any of these. And um, what we're really trying to do is you know figure out. What makes most sense from a deployment standpoint and cost standpoint also because um you know entering in into uh the world of power apps you know brings um uh, an entire set of capabilities internally that you have to build so um and you know also it, it, there's lower risk uh with one plan because again you have that flexibility of um continuing to improve strategic portfolio manager without having to make a decision on uh, a direction, a technical preference that's going to have long-term impact uh, on the organization. Now, the, the third is, you know, we are adapted by nature in the sense that we bring um, all work from uh, all um, man planning systems. So whether you're talking about um, Azure DevOps, Planner, uh, Jira, um, we are trying to bring, you know, give you the full picture by giving you the ability to bring all of that work um, into one plan um, connected to the M365 platform. So we talk a lot about crawl, walk, run, and I'm gonna show some examples here and then we'll jump into uh, into the demonstration. So um, here the, the important concept is how we um, complement what's already there um, in the, um, um, project Power App. Uh, so I highlight the areas, you know, strategy, portfolio, prioritization, financials, capability, my work, and timesheet. At the same time, we're leveraging what's already there. Project requests, um, programs, uh, obviously project uh, uh, projects and tasks, and then um, what's already there in terms of risk issue changes, uh, governance, and, and so on. So we're completing the picture so that you have a complete solution. And this is for an organization that would um, decide to go down the route of um, using the Project Power App. So, um, which, you know, again, it's a technical preference. So if your organization either has Dynamics or uh, Project Operations or um, has already embarked on having a number of uh, Power Apps and has even has the accelerator, this would be a way of, um, you know, accelerating into having a complete um, project portfolio management solution, and really, what how that how that occurs is we really embed uh, one plan within uh, the Power App. So um, you know, it it's a much simpler process than uh, having custom solutions and um, uh, PCF uh, code embedded, um, less risk. And at the same time, you know, giving you the ability to have, um, you know, that complete uh, set of features for driving uh, project portfolio management. You know, the, the next uh, scenario is one in which, um, you know, one plan comes um, uh, and brings the ability to integrate within that project portfolio uh, work from other planning systems outside of a project for the web. So here we're talking about integrating, um, most importantly, the desktop, because um, you know you cannot actually, other than importing uh, and continuing to work on a plan and project for the web, with one plan you can um, import your desktop, uh, project desktop client schedule and continue to making updates through it. Um, if you're uh, doing work in Azure DevOps, and actually need to have uh, the perspective of epics and features together with projects and deliverables, that's what one plan provides. So in this case, now we're talking about having a full adaptive uh, um, hybrid model where you can have you know, all work from um, all, all systems. And not only Microsoft, but you, know, you could have Jira in here also 
that actually um, brings other agile work or, or, or you know other systems, Smartsheet, uh, even. So um, you're leveraging uh, the Power Platform at the same time that you're bringing work from from other solutions. And I'll be showing that in a second also. So before I go, I'll I'm going to highlight a couple of case studies um, that we've um, where we've actually done this. So the first one is Albany International, which is interesting because they actually came to us um, through 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 Microsoft, and um, they were literally uh, piloting um, you know what was available out of the box. So they're choosing Project for the Web because it is available with M365 for them, and um, they wanted to um, also um, put the accelerator, the project accelerator or um, uh, project and power app so that they could actually start tracking, um, you know, project metadata and having um, a sort of portfolio of projects. Um, and, you know, that, that worked well in the short term until, you know, they kind of grew uh, out of it and actually needed more capabilities as, I'm, um, as I said earlier. And what they did there is they actually added um, one plan to uh, the accelerator, and um, they ended up, um, you know, requiring those capabilities after, um, you know, going through the um, uh, the use of um, the out of the box um, um, project accelerator and project for the web, and um, you know they are supporting 800 active projects and 200 us users, and you know there are very compelling reasons for using project for the web because it's available through Office and um, so, you know, a very good uh, story on how you can start with Project for the Web and the Accelerator and then add one plan capabilities to enhance what you have. And the second one is um, wall clippers, and I actually participated in this, so I know a little bit about it, the, the, uh, the, the case study. Um, they're a global uh, manufacturer of uh, per professional consumer clippers. They're, um, they're, they sell the product in 165 countries at manufacturing facilities all over the world. So, um, uh, you know, they were going through an internal transformation and wanted to address uh, strategic portfolio management as well as new product development, as well as collaborative work management within the organization. So the way this played out, um, you know, they, because they're global, they needed to, you know, have it available everywhere. They wanted to also leverage um, what was available through Microsoft 365, which is Project for the Web. They um, wanted to also um, leverage the accelerator for their their teams, really, uh, not for an EPMO, but wanted to give teams the ability to, you know, have their inventory of projects in uh, the Project Accelerator. Uh, a lot of um, again collaborative work management. In other words, um, they, you know, at the team level, they just wanted to provide the tool to everybody to have, you know, projects and assignments, um, you know, task assignments across the organization. Um, at the strategic level, they they were they decided to use one plan. So here you have a dual scenario where at the lower level of the organization was enabled with uh, project for the web and the accelerator, and then um, for the strategic level, one plan was used. Um, Power BI was uh, used across the organization, so you know that's that was uh, the reporting uh, capability that was implemented. And this is where actually where where it, um, where it turned out we had um, one plan at the uh, portfolio program management level, one plan standalone, and then the project accelerator for collaborative work management for the rest of the organization. Um, Interestingly, here you know there was a, another area that was used that used one plan for a new product development, so there was actually uh, either even a second group. Um, also, because of uh, one connect, some of the projects that were um, in Project for the Web actually were um, you know promoted, if you will, to the one plan strategic portfolio management solution. So that's a case where you know if the project was important enough. It actually get integrated into into one plan as part of the picture also, so um, it was an interesting scenario because it it met requirements for you know a wide um, um, scope of users within the organization, and you really had um, you know the ability to use them all uh, all of the tools that were on the table. Um, 
So as 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 always with a um, a PPM initiative, adoption and change management, um, you know, you have to support um, the, the users so that uh, you can sustain uh, the implementation. And then um, you know that that is that is through you know training resources support for for the user base, and then finally um, you know if projects made it to the strategic level have the ability to connect them or uh, get uh, integrate them into one plan from um, you know from project for the web. So um, and that you know happened uh, as a result of um, you know. This, Portfolio session, portfolio steering committee sessions, where those decisions were made. So the, the final is Technicolor, a worldwide um, leader in uh, media and entertainment. Um, you know, well known um, for award-winning artist, technologist. Um, and here, the this is a, a scenario that's going to be encountered by many organizations, whether you're using Project Server or Project Online PWA, which is that um, you know end of life is coming for the solutions. It's Microsoft has announced it. Um, the the definitive timeline is not announced yet, although we anticipate uh, it will be within the next 12 months. Uh, but it, it, it it's uh, it's well known by now that uh, Project Online will be retired at some point. So. Um, you have um, organizations like Technicolor that um, you um, you really need to move from uh, your existing um, project server and project online, and it means you have to also uh, have an opportunity to meet requirements that you're probably currently not meeting with those solutions, which is, in the case of Technicolor, integrating Jira, uh, Project Professional, uh, and Excel. Um, the reality is Project Server and Project Online haven't had investments for a number of years. So, you know, th there is a, a need for a more more modern user experience um, and, um, you know, in, in enhancing reporting capabilities, which is really the, you know, one of the main um, outputs and outcomes of uh, project portfolio management. So uh, that was, um, you know, the drivers for um, moving away from uh, migrating to a project server. Um, and, you know, in this case, um, there were a, a number of uh, additional capabilities that we provided. Um, we integrated with Jira, against through our OneConnect uh, Power Automate, um, is pulling data from multiple systems into one plan. So, again, leveraging uh, the, you know, the workflow capability of Power Automate uh, directly into one plan. In this case, um, they're not using the accelerator, they're, they're literally using one plan standalone, which is a choice. Um, you do not need to uh, go down the route of, of uh, uh, power apps and the project accelerator with one plan. You could be using one plan on its own. Again, that, that, that theme of flexibility that we provide. Um, and then um, we have a uh, you know time sheeting, so we we provided that capability. And then again, automated user management with uh, with Power Automate. And you can see here that you know there's a number of components that we uh, that we brought to the table in terms of um, you know leveraging uh, capabilities that Microsoft has in order to um, uh, you know the project desktop, as I said before, we one plan work planner in Jira. So they're maintaining their investment in Microsoft while uh, getting the uh, capabilities that one plan brings to the table. Um, you know the 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 um, roadmaps are built when we talk about um, using um, you know the, migrating in this case from uh, project server into one plan. Um, and that means that you know it, it's over uh, quarters and even years. Um, so you want to continue to um, use uh, the solutions uh, um, and have multiple releases of capabilities for your user base. So um, and obviously uh, continuing to focus on Power BI because that's really the the focus of reporting. Um, so think about that long term. A roadmap that you're going to build when you uh, initiate a project like this. So what I'd like to do now is turn and show you just a feature flash of what I was talking about, so you understand um, 
and I have an idea. Let me switch here. So the first thing I want to show is um, the you know project project for the web and the Power App or the Project Accelerator. And um, this is uh, the out of the box experience. You can actually download this from GitHub and um, you know start using it uh, uh, immediately. And you can even start making changes in order to address your specific requirements. We do that for customers, you know, that want to have a custom uh, project Power App. Uh, e even without one plan, just to get started, you know, that's uh, the first step, you know, crawl that uh, I did not address because, again, we're, we are, for, for the sake of time and, you know, most organizations by now are coming to us uh, for that added capability. So, you know, what really happens is, um, um, you know, if, if, if you add the one plan components, you can see that um, within my navigation now I have more capabilities. Uh, that I've added and you know in this case for simplicity's sake what we do is we have um, you know our one plan portfolio is analyzer our modeler for what if scenarios and then our resource plan so if we go here we can see that um, we have uh, our programs and projects um, that are being shown all of these uh, projects are this is one plan integrated directly within the project accelerator it's a real easy way of adding that uh, planning hierarchy. So you could have, um, you know, even portfolios if you wanted to. We we purposely left it um, just like the accelerator. So that's why there was only program and projects here. I'll show in a second a, a separate uh, environment that has ha that has that. But the rest of the solution is, um, you know, driven by the out of the box experience. So. Um, I think the the significance of that is you know very you can very easily and in this case we're using one plan so we have a toggle here you can very easily combine both uh, experiences in order to um, you know have a, a full portfolio management solution um, here financials embeds the uh, one plan financial capability where you can do budget forecast actuals and then resources. Um, summarizes what you've done in Project for the Web and gives you um, that capability, whether it's committed or scheduled work. So this is actually the work that's being done in uh, Project for the Web. Uh, in Tasks, um, here's Project for the Web. Let me go ahead. And... Project for the Web, basically the, the schedule that's built in Project for the Web is uh, rendered within the the um, the application, and that's actually what is um, being summarized within the within the resource plan. The rest of the solution, your know, risk log, issue log, change log, is is essentially the same. So um, again, nice combination of bridging um, the gaps and providing you with what would be a full portfolio management solution. If we go back to Analyzer, you can see here that um, you know you have your different uh, views. Um, and uh, that enhance, um, you know, the the capability that um, that is already there with the accelerator. And I think most significant uh, two things: if you wanted to do what if scenario planning, modeler um, is uh, something that um, you know our modeler feature is what if um, capability in order to do scenarios. Um, and you know, compare constraints uh, based on what you want to, uh, what either funding or resources that you want to manage. And then, um, you know, same thing in terms of benefits uh, um, or or committed resources. And then, you know, you can go through and. Um, select these select projects based on prioritization based on the different criteria and then um, you know select out in order to make make your or try to make your uh, um, your scenario and then save the scenario so there's a lot more to this um, you know but I just wanted to highlight that again that is not available in, in the out of the box project accelerator and um, you know you can um, add one plan to it in order to have that capability. 
um, and you can have different, um, you know, different models also. Uh, and then finally, the resource plan, which is, um, you know, most important. Uh, basically, you're summarizing all of the work that was created from, you know, your your project schedules. Uh, you can also do top down. This is the committed uh, plan is really top down scheduling in case you have a resource plan engagement model with your resource manager managers but here's you know this is the scheduled work this is actually what's taking place with all the projects that we have in the solution so um again in a very simple way we've added one plan capabilities we've maintained um what's in the accelerator and giving you a full project portfolio management solution so if you're in a very sim you know if you want to start at a very basic level or crawl or walk level this is um this is the way to go um, and again, you've made the, the conscious decision to go down the path of uh, using Power Apps, which is perfectly fine. And now you have a full portfolio management solution, you know, using one plan. Now, the, the, you know, the, the alternative, if you're using Project Flutter, would just be to use one plan separately. So this is the same, actually the same solution, but um, without Power Apps. So again, that flexibility, that power of choice, that uh, that we provide um, that is is not available with anyone else um, that is um, you know that that's providing a power app solution so you don't have to use um, you know power apps if you don't want to or don't have the level of um, uh, competency internally you could just use one plan and project for the web and project desktop which is the other option uh, you know, in, in terms of um, information, sensitive information, in within one plan we have um, groups and configuration of groups um, to uh, segment uh, users to certain data. Um, if you're using the accelerator, then you know you you would use the Power Apps. Uh, also, have to use the Power Apps capabilities to develop a security model. So um, there, it, it's a little bit more complex, but um, you know, you you can achieve the same thing um, within one plan. Like I said, we do, we have a, you know a, a, we define security groups, and that's how we uh, segment um, information to users and and features also. Uh, so the second, I I'm, I want to show one more um, one more capability uh, or one more scenario. So the scenario I want to talk uh, now. I'm going to take you to the to the ultimate level. Which is okay. We are really want to add a lot more uh, than just you know basic project portfolio management capabilities. We want to um, actually have um, you know a full a full solution that incorporates strategy, that incorporates um, a lot of different elements, and that's where that's where we bring um, we we continue to build on. Um, on the Power App. So you can see this is a much more um, developed solution that has, um, we, we have the timesheet in my work. Okay, so I'm still in a Power App, Project Power App. It's just that we've actually gone and added the strategy component to it. We've added uh, demand management um, by having ideas and requests. And um, we have now portfolios also showing programs, projects. Are, are the one plan portfolio, which is analyzer and then modeler here also, which I, I just showed, and then resource management. So again, this is an EPMO scenario that's using uh, the project power app, but has also decided to, um, again, complete the capabilities by um, leveraging uh, one plan. So, um, you know, we, we, and, and again, this is, again, literally connecting to the one plan SaaS. Uh, because this site, you know, exists within one plan, um, you know, on its own. So um, again, you're 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 just leveraging power ups um, to get to that uh, to that additional oh, to that additional capability. Let me see if this is connected. Oh, this one is not. I think I need to go to another site. But the the concept here is that um what we're doing is embedding one plan within the um the the ex the accelerator and then building it to give you every capability that you're looking for to address um your scenario 
Now, if, if we went to one plan standalone, again, which is not as complex, and here, this is the same, the same site uh, for strategic portfolio management, but within one plan standalone. And by the way, I get the benefit of, of having project for the web, planner, uh, project desktop client, um, Azure DevOps, and you can see the Teams integration that um, that is really important because that's where we're actually um, executing the projects. Um, if you want to bring the, the third-party tools, you can see that we have other uh, other projects that are being done um, with, um, uh, with with other solutions outside of Microsoft. So we give you the ability to bring those in also. Uh, you know the concept uh, in terms of uh, managing managing a, a plan type um, is you have a series of tabs that you see here. The most important one being details. That is a project form. We have a life cycle that's drive, driven by uh, Power Automate, and um, you know the the project manager is evolving the item and moving it. Um, to uh, you know, through the, the different lifecycle stages, which could be automated. Um, if you need support in generating a business case, you can you know use Sophia GPT to do that. Um, and I, I won't do it now, but you know if you if we, we need to write a description for this plan, um, you know it can go through and do that, and you, and you can copy paste it and edit it. Um, the rest of the form you can see there's prioritization values. Um, if you wanted to do association to key results, again, now we're at the highest level, most sophisticated level where we're actually doing alignment. Um, schedule data that's coming from the schedule, financial data that's coming from the financial planner, effort summary data, and then also um, the rest of your uh, form that um, you would, you know, you would want to uh, build. We also uh, snapshot and track indicators, by the way. So you can also um, do that. And then finally, status information. There is a specific status report page also that is snapshotted, but you could do it also within details. So uh, with the, the same um, capabilities that I showed in the Project Power App are shown here, which is, okay, I have ideation, um, I can, um, you know, evolve ideas through a business case and then uh, convert them into projects. Again, it's a, it has a separate life cycle from the project life cycle. And then um, when I'm ready to, you know, take a proposed item that's been approved, I can actually, you know, reorganize it and convert it into a project. And then the project manager can continue, uh, you know, the process of developing the uh, the business case within um, within the portfolio. Uh, if you're then moving, um, project manager can continue doing that, that work as I was showing before. Um, and then um, when you're ready, uh, whether it's in this step or uh, the following step where you're developing uh, your schedule, uh, you can go through and do uh, prioritization. And here you have your prioritization values. You know, again, by this time uh, the full business case has been developed, and you can um, either here or uh, through our modeler, where I was showing the modeler in the accelerator, we can go through and you know approve projects, turn projects active because we're gonna we're gonna execute them. Um, you can see resource load here. You know, also. Um, but um, you know, if you if you really want to do what if scenarios, uh, it's best to then you go to the modeler uh, in order to do your what if um, what if scenarios. And um, let me go to one that has that scenario is already built. So then you can see my ten million dollar budget. And um, the summary values of uh, was it uh, what, what I'm able to achieve with that with that uh, budget. So, 22 projects versus 28 projects, you know, and close to what uh, we have available. Um, and you know, there's a lot more here. Uh, here's where you would do your what if for resource uh, planning, and um, you can also uh, 
you know, do resequencing of your projects. Um, this one that's proposed, maybe we want to do it much later. Does that actually resolve the resource conflict that we have? And we can actually see here what's, you know, what might be creating that, this product launch. We might have to replace this resource so we can go to the project and replace the resource. So um, you would do that within Modeler. That's what you're looking at right now. And again, if we, you know, go back to our uh, portfolio, we are still leveraging all of the Microsoft tooling. So um, we haven't lost anything uh, from our investment in, um, in project, um, project desktop client project for the web planner and teams and um, Azure DevOps even. So, um, So that's one plan, you know, again, not using the accelerator, but one plan standalone while leveraging all the capabilities uh, of M365 and also integrating external data for uh, a full scenario. So I hope you were able to, um, you know, get some insights from the presentation on how one plan is a, you know, full feature strategic portfolio management pure play. It maximizes uh, M365. Um, we, you know, give you um, the capability to uh, focus and improve project portfolio management using the Microsoft Cloud, and then we give you the greatest flexibility uh, because you get, you have, there's different ways of deploying it, especially if you're migrating from um, project server, project online, and give you the shortest time to value without having any, you know, great dependency on, um, you know, Power Apps or um, any other solution. Um, also, the ability to integrate external data, I think, is really important. Um, there's no, uh, uh, you know, right now, we, we live in um, collaborative work management environments where there's multiple tools within an organization, within your organization. So, we need to be able to manage that and give you uh, the ability to, um, to bring that data in from all those different uh, solutions. So please um, visit our webinar links. We have uh, um, more webinars coming, telling our story and our uh, our capabilities. Um, I, I I briefly mentioned the solutions uh, that we have. So um, go ahead and um, initiate a trial, depending on what your scenario is. Um, the strategic portfolio management is the most advanced one, but you know, adaptive or agile are um, good uh, depending on your again your requirement set. Adaptive is probably the most uh, flexible one um, of all of them. And then if you're in an agile lean portfolio management or agile portfolio management, uh, then you know, go ahead and start with that one. Um, you know, we have personalized one-on-one -on -one demos uh, that are driven by your um, what the problems that we're trying to solve uh, and the requirements that you have for uh, project portfolio management. So please make contact so that um, we can, um, you know, we can address them and um, you can see how we, you know, deliver value in, uh, in uh, strategic portfolio management. So thank you for your time. And look forward to seeing you um, in our in our webinars. My contact information is there. If you have any specific question, please um, you know feel free to uh, make contact directly, and, and we can uh, address your um, your queries. Thank you very much.